San Antonio starts right now. Happy Friday. It's February 17th. President's Day weekend is almost here. Also the debut of our new XFL team, the San Antonio Brahmas. We've spent the better part of this morning practicing the new one. Yes. Steph's used to this because you graduated from UT. Right, it's horns up. And now we have to? Horns forward. Forward, yeah. horns forward, forward for our San Antonio Brahmas. That's right, but I know Justin has a whole nother idea. <laughs> well, he's, he's an Aggie. I would never do that. Outside <laughs> with live cam as we go to Justin. Beautiful yeah. day. Now you are a graduate, a proud graduate of Texas A&M. Yeah. We've tried to get Justin to start with the horns up and bring it forward no, and he said that it's a right here yeah. <laughs> just, that. <laughs> just a rule i don't make these rules but that's just the way it is uh yeah we're excited about everything getting started here in san antonio if you're heading outside though this morning i gotta tell you it's a, it's a little chilly we had some gusty winds still overnight the winds have calmed some but not enough to where we don't have a wind chill 30 is what it feels like here in San Antonio right now. Temperatures are in the upper 30s, but it feels like 30 degrees. 33 is what it feels like in Hondo. It feels like 25 in Curvo. So it's jacket weather. I think most of the day, temperatures will warm up, yes, but it's still going to be sort of a cool day. As we go outside for you, here's some of the weather headlines. As I said, more sun today, but still chilly. Clouds fill in tomorrow. We'll get some filtered sun on your Saturday. And by next week, we're back in the 80s, so our roller coaster ride continues throughout late February 38 right now. Dew point is at 20. We've got northerly winds at 13, but gusting the 24 and that's why that wind chill is in place. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast 44 to 11 o'clock 48 noontime. By the time we get into the afternoon, we're looking at mid 50s for highs. We'll call it mostly sunny. Northeasterly winds will still be there 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then tonight it's going to get chilly again. We're expecting temperatures to be down near freezing by tomorrow morning. We're going to look ahead to the weekend and talk about our rain chances uh, next week coming up here in just a second. But we'll get over to Stephen now with a check on the morning traffic. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Justin. And don't worry, I have plenty of turtlenecks to last me through the weekend. All right, uh, let's get a look around town. 410 at Evers. Uh, things aren't too bad out there. Even 35 at Cesar Chavez. Uh, really, the morning commute has dwindled down. So that's some good news to report. However, we have seen a few crashes as we get uh, the weekend commute rolling. Let's go ahead and talk about what we have here. 410 northbound at Ingram Road. This is the latest crash that we are adding to our list. And it's actually causing a little bit of a delay, which we can see it right there on the map. A lot of red out there. And 410, always a very busy spot. So just watch out. Do have to take you uh, take a drive over here to US 90 eastbound at Zazamoto. We did have another crash that was causing a little bit of a slowdown in the eastbound lanes. That's already cleared out, so I'm not going to worry about that anymore. And as we give you a wide view of the metropolitan area, yeah, back to normal. A lot of green on the screen, but unfortunately, it does look like we saw another crash lingering around 1604. That's closer to Bandera Road. We'll get a closer look at Transguide, but you see plenty of construction will be taking place later today and, of course, throughout the weekend. So plan your commute ahead of time. Scan the QR code that is now on your screen that takes you to our KSAT traffic page, has a full list of all the current closures, and that's going to take us all the way into the early days of March. Guys. Stephen, thank you. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. In last night's State of the State address, Governor Greg Abbott outlined the biggest things he wants state legislators to focus on this legislative session. Now, some of those including school safety, education freedom, and COVID mandates. You can watch this full address on our website at kset.com. The Justice Department is taking over the corruption investigation into Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Federal prosecutors have been investigating Paxton since 2020 after several former aides accused him of bribery, abuse of office, and other potentially criminal offenses. El Paso police say a fight between two groups led to the shooting in the food court of the Cielo Vista Mall there. That was Wednesday evening. Now, one man was killed and three other men were injured. Two other men were taken into custody. The cause of that fight has not been released, but police say it does not appear to be gang related. Five former Memphis police officers are set to be arraigned today for their involvement in the death of Tyree Nichols last month. They are each facing seven charges, including second degree murder and aggravated assault. If convicted, they face up to 60 years in prison. Other officers have also been fired in relation to this case, but they have not been charged. President Biden said the three unidentified flying objects shot down after that Chinese spy balloon passed across the country were neither spying on the U.S. nor sent from another country. He also announced new parameters that will guide what action the administration takes going forward. State and federal officials are in East Palestine, Ohio, after a train carrying toxic chemicals derailed two weeks ago. 
The EPA chief said it will hold the rail company responsible, but concerns about potential health threats are rising within the community. Many residents are demanding independent testing of water and soil as the weather threatens to complicate efforts to contain the toxic pollution. The Supreme Court has removed a case that could determine the future of Title 42 from its calendar. A reason for removing the case was not given. Oral arguments were set to begin March 1st. The public health emergency that underpins Title 42 is set to expire on May 11th. Large passenger airports in the U.S. will soon have detailed safety plans called safety management system plans given to them by the FAA. It will affect 200 airports nationwide. The new FAA rule comes as the agency turns its attention to a series of recent near collisions. A new study shows just how strong natural immunity against COVID-19 is for people who have already had the infection. Researchers determined that people are protected against symptomatic illness for at least 10 months after infection. Protection against severe disease and death was still at almost 90% at the 10-month mark. And that's today's 9 at 9. And your morning headlines, new police body cam video shows a fiery rescue in the Rio Grande Valley and after a car crashes, leaving two teens trapped inside. And the quick actions of a young boy helped save his mother's life, plus a long lost letter finally makes its destination after a century. RJ Marcus joins us with all of those stories. It's a long time, my friend. It yeah. is a very long time, yeah. This was like a scene straight out of The Crown or something like that. <laughs> when you see, when you read exactly how it was written, so we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But I uh, want to start you guys off real quick with some uh, entertainment news here. Live with Kelly and Ryan, we've all very familiar with that show, will soon be no more. Ryan Seacrest announced he will be leaving the morning talk show this spring. So Seacrest started co-hosting with Kelly Ripa in 2017 and called this to decision, quote, bittersweet. During that time, he has pulled triple duty. He has hosted, of course, live with Kelly, with Kelly and Ryan, hosting American Idol, and he's also continued doing his nationally syndicated radio shows. Seacrest will be replaced by someone Kelly Ripa knows pretty well. That would be her husband. Mark Consuelos has filled in on the show several times over the past couple of years. I'm sure they will be okay. All right, moving on to this uh, pretty, pretty interesting body cam, body cam video here that shows the moments that several Brownsville police officers rushed to the rescue of two teens that were trapped inside a burning car. And before we show you this video full, we want to let you know that some of these images may be disturbing to watch. So Augustin Briseño Jr. and his friend Roger Martinez were trapped in a car that caught fire after a crash last month. So the 19 year old teens are still in a hospital right here in San Antonio listed in critical condition. Now, one of the officers who responded to the crash, in fact, all three of them were recognized by the city of Brownsville yesterday for their heroic efforts. Officers are expected to play a shepherd, but they're also expected to place a, a warrior role and they have to have a quick transition between one and the other, right? I mean, what we saw there was partial warriors, right? Because they never gave up, not knowing whether or not that, that car was gonna explode, not knowing anything else. And you can see that was a very intense scene there. So both those teens, again, right here in San Antonio, suffered severe burns. Briseño is sedated and unable to breathe on his own. Martinez lost part of his leg and actually had to have brain surgery. And again, they are still hanging on there, listed in critical condition. Okay, moving, switching gears here just a little bit. So it took more than a century, but a letter addressed to a London home finally has reached its destination. Check this out. So the current occupant is named Finley Glenn. She saw the letter say 16 on the envelope, but assumed that it meant 2016 until he noticed that the stamp featured King George V instead of Queen Elizabeth II. That's right. Check this out. This letter was written by the daughter of a sea merchant and was addressed to the wife of a local stamp magnet with the greeting, My Dear Katie. She wrote about a family vacation, which I learned was actually called a family holiday, and said that she was suffering with a very heavy cold. So a local magazine is putting together an article about this discovery, but trying to still figure out what happened to this letter is still a mystery to many right now. Okay, moving on to a young boy who helped save his mother's life with a critical phone call. So this four-year-old boy is named Asher. His mom, Rachel, was having trouble breathing and fell to the floor, and she didn't really realize it at the time, but she was in septic shock. Asher instantly sprang into action, grabbing mom's phone, holding the side button, and telling Siri to call his dad, Tyler. Dad called the paramedics, and Asher even opened the door for those EMTs and cleared the pathway for his mom to get help.
he just knew how to do Siri from watching us or <laughs> I don't know what. In that moment, he was so calm. He started clearing a path to me from the door. And just kept saying it's gonna be okay. I'm so proud. Yeah, very emotional moment there with the family. So mom is expected to make a full recovery here, as you just saw from that video. And the community was so impressed by Asher that they honored him with a life-saving award. The sheriff there saying that he's likely the youngest person ever to receive this honor. So pretty cool stuff there, you guys, you from Asher it. taking quick action here to save mom's life. You can tell he's a little overwhelmed by all of this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm sure he was just like, well, I've seen mom and dad do this several times. Sure. Right. Call Siri, but yeah, just a uh, quick thinking that off the top of his feet right there. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, RJ. Thanks, guys. Right now we're at 909, 38 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. We are highlighting the importance of National Cancer Prevention Month, which is February. In our next half hour, we're going to be speaking with a local doctor about cancer prevention and what screenings to ask your doctor for. Plus, We're at a new exhibit in downtown that is showcasing lots of work from 40 contemporary artists of Latin American descent living in Texas. We explore this exhibit and look at the different themes next. Just about 913, a new exhibit highlights the experience of Latino communities throughout the state. Tiffany Huetas takes us to Market Square and explores the exhibit called Soy de Tejas, a statewide survey of Latinx art. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Happy Friday. I'm so excited to be here. These artists are from all over Texas, some from San Antonio, some from Houston, Austin, and from the Rio Grande Valley. This piece right here is from an artist in Brownsville. This exhibit features work by more than 40 artists of Latin American descent and all with ties to Texas. We have Rigoberto Luna who put this together. Good morning, Rigoberto. Hi, good morning. Thank you for being here. Yes, this is so amazing. Tell us about all the different themes we're going to experience here today. Um, so we have um, 40 Texas artists, like you said. Um, we have a ton of different mediums, video, as you can see, and we have drawing and painting, large sculpture. Uh, some of the themes that you'll see um, include migration and gentrification and displacement and a lot of like very serious issues that we're dealing with here in Texas. But at the same time, uh, we balance that with some of the cultural aspects of our of our experience, and so food and music and family and faith. Uh, it's a good it's a good balance of uh, the Latino experience, I guess, living here in Texas. Um, that's really what I want people to take away from it. How important was it to create this space? Um, very important. I think right now, uh, narratives of Latinx artists is very important across the country, and so to be able to put this together in my hometown and bring all these artists together here. Uh, it a, was a very important project for me. I've worked on it for four years. Um, and yeah, it's two stories. It's 20,000 square feet. It's 117 art pieces. It was a lot of work. When can people come to this exhibit? Uh, the gallery is open Wednesday through Friday from 1030 to 5 on the weekends. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, it's open from noon to 5. Amazing. Well, I'm so excited to learn more about this exhibit. Yeah. And we're going to have more coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. All right, it's been a cold morning here in South Texas. Justin Horning joins us now with a look ahead at our President's Day weekend, but the year yeah. continues to fly by, doesn't it? So very quickly, and uh, I, Mike was sitting next to me this morning. He hates countdowns. I don't know if you know this about Mike. We know. <laughs> we know the Christmas yes. we know. countdown. And I accidentally reveal countdowns all the time, nonetheless. Accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you gotta know what's coming up. He's all about living in the moment. I get that. Uh, but we do wanna look ahead. And I wanna show you how many days away we are. Today is obviously the 17th from time change. 23 ah, days. Yep. We That's, don't mind the, the countdown. Well, see, the time change is the day we don't really like because we lose sleep. That's right, this one. But I like it because it's, you know, we get uh, longer evenings. Oh, that's true. Yes, big fan of that. Uh, spring begins in 31 days and uh, Easter's 51 days away. And if you were curious, Fiesta, 62 days away from the official start. So we're getting right on into the you know, the, the warm thoughts, right? After what has been a pretty cold morning. Wind chills are in the 30s still right now. So we go outside for you. 
Some blue sky, sun is shining, which is uh, a change from yesterday. 38, dew point at 20, northerly winds at 13, gusting at 24. Winds did calm overnight, but not completely. And so with these gusts still around 20, 25 miles per hour, it uh, makes it feel pretty chilly out there. Gusting at 28, New Braunfels gusting at 17, in Pleasanton. A little bit less in the way of wind as you get out to, to the west of town. But that windshield at 30, that's what it feels like. 30 in uh, Converse, 31 Canyon Lake, 31 Bandera, 24. The current windshield, the feels like number at Lost Maples. KSAT 12 hour forecast, 44 to 11 o'clock, 48 noontime. And then by the afternoon, we're only in the mid 50s. That's it. So it's, it's going to be a, a cool day and we'll still get some high cloud streaming across. 48, 7 o'clock, 46, 8 p.m., 44 by 9 p.m. on our way to another freeze tonight. So most of us in the 50s this afternoon, but by tomorrow morning down to 32 here in town and another freeze for those in the Hill Country, 30 Bernie, 32 Canyon Lake, 32 San Marcos. So another uh, heads up. We didn't quite get there last night, by the way, or this morning, but we have the possibility of another light freeze uh, coming up tomorrow morning. And the air is really dry, so that uh, that helps for those temperatures to rise and fall. But as we get into Sunday, that's when the moisture starts to increase again. So dew points right there around 50, which isn't bad, but shows that we're getting some increasing moisture. That probably leads to a little bit of fog Sunday morning. And we'll probably see that again Monday and Tuesday as well. But Monday and Tuesday, that's when we start to add in some of those rain chances. More so Tuesday night and uh, to Wednesday before our next system comes in. So big picture here. And I know you uh, probably noticed some moisture down there across Mexico. That's not reaching the ground, a little too dry, but that's some upper level moisture. The last system has pushed well east now to the east coast. And what I'm watching tomorrow, we've got some high mid-level clouds that will be working in from the south and west. So it clouds up a bit more tomorrow. It won't be completely cloudy, but it's just kind of the filtered sun on your Saturday. And as we look at the weekend rodeo forecast, maybe you have plans to go out uh, to the rodeo. 59 on Saturday, still a little bit chilly, so you'll probably want your jacket. Winds will be light, though, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then Sunday, partly cloudy. We get more of a southerly wind, and things really do start to warm up. So Sunday will be the warmer day, 73. And as we get into next week, 80 on President's Day, mostly cloudy, 83 Tuesday. And then a very small chance of rain Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. Uh, and then it clears out Wednesday with uh, 84 degrees. Uh, it, uh, Wednesday is going to be a warm day, warm and windy, so we'll have to watch for some fire concerns yet again. Something to look out for. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. A heads up for San Antonio Solid Waste Management customers who need to get rid of stuff around the house. The department is hosting a special household hazardous waste event tomorrow. Is from 8 to noon at the Bulky Waste Collection Center on Rigsby Road on San Antonio's east side. Customers can drop off paints, oils, or chemicals for free. All you have to do is show a valid picture ID and a copy of your most recent CPS energy bill showing payment of the environmental fee. For more information and a look at the guidelines and a full list of acceptable items, you can head over to our website at kset.com. Friday morning, 919, 38 degrees. Many people are remembering famed artist and muralist Jesse Trevino. After the break, we're going to meet one of his former apprentices, who didn't expect Jesse to become his inspiration. The so-called San Antonio Justice Charter is now officially on the May 6th ballot after a council vote just yesterday. The new Proposition A includes a host of proposed charter changes on policing, including decriminalizing marijuana and abortion. Now, the city attorney has said most of Prop A's changes are unenforceable, but he also said the council had to put it on the ballot. The city council has no discretion the enforceability of the petition does not relieve you of your legal obligation to put the petition on the ballot because the adequate number of signatures were achieved. Uh, that's why you're not going to hear deliberation on the merits from this council. Now, three Northside council members all left council chambers rather than vote on it. Matty Pelias and Clayton Perry indicated it was because they believe the amendment violates state and federal law. John Courage said he didn't think the ballot language gave a comprehensive review of all the proposals and their implications. After months of speculation, District 10 City Councilman Clayton Perry says he will not run for re-election. Today is a deadline for candidates to file a bid to run for the seat in the May 6th election, so we don't know what Perry's plans are for the future. He returned from a leave of absence on January 12th, and he's currently facing charges for misdemeanor DWI and failure to stop and give information. 
Both charges stem from an alleged November 6th hit and run. In other news this morning, many are mourning the loss of famed local artist and muralist Jesse Trevino. He lost his battle with cancer earlier this week. Among those mourning is Michael Roman, a former apprentice of Trevino's who went on to become a muralist himself. As case has suggested, De Goyado reports Roman didn't realize early on that he was working with the man who would be his inspiration. The spirit of healing gracing the front of the Children's Hospital of San Antonio is one of the late Jesse Trevino's most iconic murals. Made of thousands of tiles, each was carefully cemented in place, followed by a team of apprentices. Clean it real nice and then, you know, grout everything and make sure everything was, was set really well. But it wasn't until he got the job did Michael Roman know who Jesse Trevino was. Oh, so that's who Jesse is. I, I had no idea. The same Michael Roman who years later created a West Side landmark. The famous Vietnam mural is a tribute to combat veterans like Trevino and Roman's father, Tony. That's his dad reading a letter from his then sweetheart and future wife. A mural by his former apprentice, which Trevino got to see. You can see it. He was he was overjoyed. He was really happy. Proud of you. Very proud, yes, absolutely. Roman says that was the last time he saw his mentor and inspiration. Not letting anything stop me. No, nothing stopped him. Given Jesse Trevino's service and sacrifice, I'm told he'll always have a very special place in the hearts of veterans like himself. Especially as a Purple Heart recipient, it said Trevino became an example for others. If we can continue on with our lives and, and do something productive, nothing is impossible. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. 925, 39 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, including Alyssa Cole is out at Fiesta Fit Fest. She's going to tell us about other events coming up that San Antonio Sports has planned. But before that, we're talking with a local doctor about cancer screenings and how you can try to lower your risk of getting cancer. We'll have that interview coming up after the break. Just about 930, cancer is the second leading cause of death in the U.S. only after heart disease. February is National Cancer Prevention Month and it's an important time to learn about prevention and what screenings to ask your doctor about. Joining us this morning is Dr. Cynthia Cantu, a primary care physician at UT Health San Antonio. Good morning, Dr. Cantu. Good morning. Uh, so we have read and heard articles for years about ways to help prevent cancer. And I think it's always good to have kind of a refresher conversation because you guys are always getting new data, always new research being done. What are some of the current ways we can tell people to lower our risks of cancer overall? Well, it's actually just going back to the basics, the things that we uh, primary care physicians tend to talk to our patients and nag about. They say it's, you know, eating a healthy, balanced diet that includes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, um, avoiding tobacco use, limiting your alcohol intake, exercising, um, maintaining a healthy weight uh, because obesity has been linked to increased cancer, cancer risk. And of course, um, making sure you're staying up to date with your physical, with your primary care doctor, because that way you can discuss further what cancer screenings you need based on your age, your gender, and your family history. And why are these cancer screenings so important and why should we start with our primary care doctor there? Screenings are very important because uh, it's a way to be proactive uh, and to be able to detect any abnormality, abnormalities before the patient has symptoms. And that way, if there is any present, we can treat early and decrease mortality. What are the types of screenings that help with early detection? So uh, thankfully, we do have various tests available. We have mammograms. Uh, this is for breast cancer screening for females. Uh, we also have cervical cancer screening available, and this is done with HPV testing and cytology. Uh, there's also colon cancer screening with colonoscopies, and uh, or if you prefer, you can do stool-based testing. And there's even now lung cancer screening done with low-dose CAT scans. And you're just talking about some of those screenings. What about the age? When should we start getting these screenings? So there's a variety of expert groups that provide these recommendations. So the age to start may differ, but for the most part, the American Cancer Society recommends to start cervical cancer screening for average risk women at age 25. And this is done with HPV testing alone. Um, if it is done with that, it has to be an, a specific FDA approved HPV testing. If not, you can do HPV with uh, cytology, and this is every five years or cytology alone, um, and it's recommended to discontinue at age 65, provided that your previous cancer screenings have been normal and you've been staying up to date. 
mammograms for breast cancer screening should start at age uh, 40. But um, it's very important to discuss this further with your primary care doctor because there is some um, harms if you start that early. If not, you can start at age 45 as recommended by the American Cancer Society. And then for men and women, it is recommended to do colon cancer screening at age 45. The frequency will, will vary depending on the results. And there's also prostate cancer screening, and this is with a blood test, but it's also very important to discuss further with your primary care doctor because there's also some risk associated with that. And you can start at age 55 for the American Urological Association and the U.S. Preventive Services Test Force. All right, Dr. Conti, thank you. For more information, folks, you can call 210-450-1000 or visit cancer at uthscsa.edu. Thank you, Dr. Conti. Let's look out thank there you. with live cam. It's 40 degrees right now. It was a little chilly earlier in the 30s, but the sun's out now. With the sun's out, we're warming up some, some. There's still a bit of a wind chill out there, as we've been talking about. It feels like it's in the low 30s. Uh, you guys are familiar with Yvonne. She sends in great pictures to our KSAC Connect. And we all love mutton busting, so take a look at this video. Yvonne sent this in. I believe this is her grandson. Yes. Uh, and uh, here Wyatt. you go. Wyatt. Yeah, uh, and here's his chance to do some mutton busting. I, we, we enjoy watching these videos, and the kids do a great job. Uh, Wyatt is, uh, is brave here, and he's uh, getting ready to come out the gate. Uh, he, he did a good job. I don't want to spoil it, but well done. Yeah, gets right back up. <laughs> nice. It's right back up. Well done, Wyatt. We appreciate Cute. the video. And keep the rodeo videos and pictures coming in. We love to see them. Pollen count. This is, uh, this is great. It's just molds and they're low. No big deal there. Uh, not an issue. And as we look at current temperatures across the state, it, it's cold statewide, even down in the valley. It's 47 this morning, but 20 is up there in Amarillo. Lubbock's one of the cold spots, 24 right now there in the Texas Panhandle. Our case at 12 hour forecast will be uh, in the upper 40s by noontime. We'll only top out in the mid 50s. So despite the sun, it's still a cool day and it will be a chilly evening for any outdoor plans that you may have. More on the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you very much, Justin. All right, folks, this is the start of a new era for pro football here in San Antonio. That's right. San Antonio Ramos make their debut this Sunday at the Owl Dome as the XFL relaunches its league. We are very excited about this. Mm -hmm. uh, jo joining us once again is uh, RJ Marquez. Is this part of us or you? No, this is uh, kind of all of us okay. together okay. here. Okay. Yeah, okay. so we're just going to talk a little bit about the Brahmas here. So just a quick refresher for everybody. Uh, this is a the rebooted XFL, as I'm calling it, um, and this is going to be a 10-game season of spring football here and uh, five games here at the Dome, five games away. There are eight teams in this league and three teams in Texas. So there's going to be one in Arlington and also, of course, the Houston team as well here in San Antonio. So it's making it a really nice, uh, you know, little rivalry triangle that we're going to have here with the North Texas team and the team out in Houston. So real quick here, guys, the Brahmas also brought in a big name coach. If people don't know by now, that would be Heinz Ward. He was the uh, star receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers for years. He won two Super Bowls for the Pittsburgh Steelers and also was the MVP back in 2005. So there's a lot of excitement about this, guys. I know that they've had some meet and greets out at some places here, so uh, we're getting ready to kick off here. And I always love giving, giving, giving credit where credit is due. Yesterday, RJ uh, posted on Twitter that he had heard from a source that Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be here in San Antonio for the game yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. And? Yeah, and The Rock officially confirmed on uh, yesterday evening of course he had to have seen that tweet right there's of no course. Of course he did. <laughs> <laughs> highly doubt that um, but uh, yeah he confirmed that he would attend all four XFL games this weekend and you may be asking yourself well why is the rock going to be showing up here at uh, the XFL games well that is because he's the co-owner of this league so the Rock, Dwayne Johnson, and his uh, business partner there, Danny Garcia, and Redbird Capital, they bought the league back in 2020 for $15 million. So remember, the XFL was owned by World Wrestling Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they actually were doing pretty well, and then they had to shut down back in their uh, inaugural season because of COVID. But so, it, yeah. isn't one of the difference makers this time around, though, the ability to broadcast these games? Yeah, so that is a big part of it. So they do have a uh, nice agreement with Disney, ESPN, 
ESPN, ABC. That's I good. think uh, a couple of other uh, networks are also going to have it here, maybe like FX. So there's going to sure. have there's going to be a lot of exposure for this league. So there's a lot of uh, excitement leading up to this. So yeah, that's good. They got a good TV deal. Yeah. Seems like they got a good owner here, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, as he's going to be showing up here. And the rumor is, guys, is that the reason he's showing up, uh, mm -hmm. well, of course, he's going to all the games, but he's also planning to announce that the Alamo Dome will host this year's championship game. Oh, yeah. So XFL the championship. XFL championship game. So awesome. nothing's been confirmed. Okay. Of course, the league is staying very tight-lipped about this. But yeah, that's cool. that's the plan right now. Well, we're glad he's going to be in town, uh, especially like in the afternoons when the weather will yeah. be nice this yeah. weekend. It'll yeah, maybe he'll perfectly. stick around, hang out, maybe go yeah. to like South Town. Or well, we love right? that this first game here in San Antonio is showing on San Antonio mm -hmm. Station case at 12. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, 2 p.m. kickoff. And uh, again, guys, there's already people talking about tailgating going out there. I know we were looking up some of the Facebook groups. I talked to the Brahma Mamas yesterday. They yeah, were really excited. Cool. It's a group of women that are out there. They're going to be doing a food drive during their tailgating. And yeah, they are super excited about this. A lot of people, a lot of people are really amped up about it. They did not want to release how many tickets have been sold yet, but I'm hearing that it's been a pretty good turnout so far. Uh, I, belo I belong to one of those uh, yes. groups. Groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been talking about that tickets uh, sales were brisk, yeah, especially we here uh, as we got closer to the beginning <laughs> of the season. All right, let's talk about All-Star Weekend for the NBA. Yeah, NBA All-Star Weekend, guys, this weekend. And uh, look, we don't have anyone in the game on Sunday, but my dude here, rookie Jeremy Sohan, will be on the court tonight for the 2023 NBA Rising Stars challenge. So Jeremy Sohan has been playing great since he came back from injury. He's averaging 10 points a game, 4.9 rebounds, 2.5 assists, about 26 minutes, and he's already made 45 starts. So remember back in the days, guys, when Pop would just never play mm -hmm. any of these young guys? That's all it is yeah. now on the roster anyway, but this guy is <laughs> definitely standing out for sure. Yes, he is. And he's also currently the first Spurs rookie since, uh, oh, remember that guy, Tim Duncan? Yeah, back yes. in uh, 97, 98, to average at least 10 points a game. So this game tips off tonight at 8 p.m. Very excited about it. Very good. I was so going to, yeah. Rising stars tonight, <laughs> uh, skills challenge tomorrow night, mm -hmm. and then Sunday is the game itself, 730. Good luck to our guys that are participating. Yeah, definitely. And I think Charles Bassey is also going to be part of this as well. Mm -hmm. He was the uh, he was the young man who was just signed by the Spurs uh, this past uh, week. So, yeah, good to see Charles Bassey. He's taking part in one of these G League events as well, like also kind of a rising stars thing. All right, well. back to the Brahmas. Mm -hmm. Good Brahmas. luck, guys, and yeah. horns forward. 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 Yeah, thing. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to learn it together. <laughs> yes. You can always default back to go, Brahmas, go. Yeah, yeah. We there we go. That, that works. Yeah. 939, 40 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And here's a look at what's coming up next. Coming up next, we'll tell you who this year's Fiesta Fit royalty is and what you can expect for this year's festival schedule for April. Stay tuned. I guess it always helps in mutton busting when the mutton meanders instead of I mean, that first one. Yes. <laughs> they kept redirecting him. Yeah, well, a little help here and there. Almost yeah. a full eight seconds right there. Yeah. San Antonio Sports preparing to kick off their annual Fiesta Fit Fest, an official Fiesta event focused on whole health. And our Alyssa Cole spoke with the CEO and president of the San Antonio Sports Association to learn more about the mission behind the big event. That's right, the three-day Fiesta event is just over 60 days away, and this year is going to be bigger and better. It will be held at UTSA's main campus between April 14th and 16th. There will be a cycling race, a variety of fitness classes, 5K and 10K, a slew of other activities for children and adults alike, including a health and wellness expo, live music and entertainment. President and CEO of San Antonio Sports, Jenny Karn says the purpose of this event is to benefit children at underserved Title I schools across the city. Our mission is to transform this community through the power 
power of sport. This benefits our after school. I play after school programs and um, Fit Family Challenge, which is our summer fitness program. Another thing to keep in mind, the big event that will attract thousands is the Le Tap San Antonio Tour de France. This is a major cycling event that will take place on the last day of the festival. It's a 100 mile tour out in the beautiful rolling hills of the hill country and it will be open to all level of cyclists. Now registration for the Fiesta Fit event will be listed on our website at ksat.com. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Listen so with the flex. That's what I'm talking right. about. <laughs> she was out there all morning long. Yes, and it's a good thing they were indoors earlier this morning because it was cold Quite out there. Quite brisk out there. Mm -hmm. It was still a little breezy. Have the winds remained an issue? They have. I mean, they let up some, but not mm -hmm. enough. So mm -hmm. we're still getting gusts around 2025. That oh, yeah. just makes it feel so chilly outside, even when temperatures are, you know, in the upper 30s. Uh, still feels like it's in the low 30s. Uh, we want to start out with some uh, numbers here. We, we show these quite often, but where are we at rainfall wise? It has now been 15 days since we've seen a half an inch or more at the airport. No big deal. That's fine. Uh, but as far as big rainfalls over an inch at the airport, it's been 176 days now. And then the big number, it has been 491 days since we've had two inches or more in one day. And I should point that out, point that out in one day at the airport. You got to go back to 2021 for that. Uh, the longest stretch viewer curious of less than two inches uh, at the airport is 1,705. And that was back in the 50s. So we're not there yet, but man, it has been a long stretch of what feels like some pretty dry weather. Uh, we do have one small rain chance within the seven day forecast, and that is Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And it's a small window and it's a small rain chance. So I don't think we're going to get much out of that. And as we look forward in time, February 25th through March 3rd, this is kind of the extended forecast, shows drier than average conditions. So we just aren't forecasting a lot of rain, unfortunately, in the forecast. Hopefully, once we get into spring, things will change around a little bit. So we'll go outside for you. We've got some high clouds working through right now. 38 degrees at the airport, 41 cents and 39 at both Kelly and Randolph. And there is still that pesky north wind, which does not want to let up. 38 Kerrville, 39 New Braunfels, 39 Uvalde, 42 right now in Del Rio. And a little closer to home here, right around 40 here in San Antonio. Temperatures are trying to make a climb now that the sun is out. Uh, those wind gusts gusting to 28 in New Braunfels, Boulevardi, uh, San Antonio. You go to the west side of San Antonio, the winds are a little bit lighter. Uh, there is that wind chill though. Feels like 30 here in town. Feels like 28 burning stage. Feels like it's still in the low 30s up there around Kerrville too. 31, your current feels like number. Case had 12 hour forecast as you plan out today. 48 at noontime, mostly sunny, I think. And then temperatures only top out around 55 or 56 this afternoon. Northeasterly winds will still be there, but they should be lighter into the 40s tonight and eventually 30s by tomorrow morning. Uh, 50s for just about everybody today, but tomorrow morning, much like this morning, we're dropping down to around 32 here in San Antonio, sub freezing in the hill country. Less wind though tomorrow morning, so the wind chill won't be as bad. Here's a look at the big picture across Texas, and there's not much going on. Yes, there is some moisture, at least it looks like that across Mexico, but that's high level moisture that's not reaching the ground. We are watching though some of those high level clouds. They'll be moving into the area as we get into tomorrow. So it gets quite a bit uh, cloudier on your Saturday. Some filtered sun, but we're up around 59 after starting off at 32. 45 Sunday morning with some fog to start 73 for a high 80 for President's Day. Mostly cloudy Tuesday 83 and then when there's that small chance of rain we talked about it turns windy and warm on Wednesday high of 84 it could even be warmer than that with uh, westerly winds kicking in. Uh, so a fairly dry forecast and it does warm back up. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Well, many of us here in San Antonio are all too familiar with allergies, but health experts say you can limit symptoms before they even start. CNN's Mandy Gaither explains what one allergist says you should be doing right now to protect yourself from spring allergies. Winter's not even over yet, but spring may already be in the air. Health experts say now is the time to start protecting against seasonal allergies. Really starting to block inflammation now can help not only at the start of symptoms, but also kind of make it a better season overall. Allergist Flavia Hoyt with National Jewish Health recommends a steroid nasal spray. There are some over the counter, but Hoyt says to make sure it's a nasal steroid. Check with your doctor if you're unsure. 
using that, you know, two sprays per nostril on a daily basis helps kind of minimize the inflammation. It takes a couple of weeks to build up in your system. And then when the pollen really comes full force, you're ready to ready to fight it. Hoyt says other over-the-counter therapies like antihistamines, whether it's a pill or a nasal spray, may help too, as well as nasal irrigation devices like a neti pot. Uh, those can be started closer to the allergy season, but the nasal steroids we really say to start um, around this time of year. Hoyt says now is also the time to think about keeping the outside environment from getting inside your home. That means when it starts warming up, keeping windows closed in both your car and at home and making sure pets don't bring pollen into your bed. You know, the pollen starts uh, floating around before you see the leaves on the trees, and so it can catch people off guard. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 950, 40 degrees. And when we come back, a preview of the new show premiering on ABC this weekend. A con man and a CIA agent fall in love. So what could possibly go wrong? That's where the new ABC series, The Company You Keep, starts off. It debuts on Sunday night here on KSET, and ABC's Jason Nathanson sat down with the stars of the show to find out more about it. Can you be in love with someone you're lying to? Can love grow when two people are on opposite sides of the law? We'll find out with the stylish new drama, The Company You Keep, starring Milo Ventimiglia and Katherine Hyena Kim. She's undercover in the CIA. He's part of a family of con artists looking for their next big score. Ventimiglia telling me the series shares some DNA with a few other great shows and movies. There's Out of Sight, there's Ocean's Eleven, um, Italian Jobs, um, with a little bit of like kind of Americans spun in there. And while the series is a drama, Ventimiglia says the goal here for them and the audience is to turn off the pressures of the outside world for just a little bit. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Enjoy yourselves. You know, th this is entertainment. This is something we want people to turn on for an hour. Appointment television and be like, wow, I had a great time and look forward to next week. Mm -hmm. Appointment TV is something Catherine Hennig Kim longs for. She says streaming and time shifting is great, but there's just something about making a TV date. It's the way that we all grew up watching TV. There's something so special when you get so excited about a show that you want to tune in. 10 p.m., 9 central on Sundays. Ben Tamelia, a broadcast TV veteran, and this is his first project after the end of his wildly successful last show, This Is Us. I love broadcast. There's something very comforting about we can be on every television in the country and extend beyond that. Plus, he got to learn all the tricks and trades of being a con man. Coins, cards, yeah, those things I can make them disappear. Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, we made it up to 41 degrees. Uh, we'll be up around 56 this afternoon. So a cool day, mostly sunny. Down to freezing again tonight into tomorrow morning. But the weekend, all in all, okay. Mostly cloudy tomorrow, 59. It warms up quite a bit on Sunday with some morning fog, 73. President's Day weekend. Here we go. Yeah, it's going to be a nice one. And Monday will be warm too. All right, yeah. we look forward to it. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Had a wonderful weekend.